Hello, my name is Joel Z. Williams. People in my neighborhood call me the poor people's advocate. And today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about some bed bug issues. Um, a couple things that I just found out about. Um, apparently in San Francisco, South San Francisco, there was a, a lawsuit um, filed on behalf of a mental, mentally impaired person, a person who was living um, the, the state government had provided housing for him, a voucher, and he got a, a, an apartment somewhere in South San Francisco and uh, subsequently came down with bed bugs. And the problem was so bad because this gentleman, um, because due to his illness, he was not able to make his c complaint coherent. So he, was, he, he suffered in silence for the 18 months or, or better. Um, just being bitten terribly by these bed bugs. At some point during his infestation, he was uh, bitten so so badly. Apparently, he jumped out of bed, and when he jumped out of bed, he injured himself. He he fell and um, did some damage to his ribs and required some hospitalization. And uh, in fact, had to have a breathing tube. Um, and so this brought us to the 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 attention of the the social services people there in South San Francisco and they went to investigate his apartment and found this this apartment just inundated with bed bugs everywhere and the, the reason I, I'm bringing this to to your attention is to illustrate that you may be in a situation in a multiple family dwelling uh, uh, building where there may be people like this living within your complex and you, and you may not know it and they may not know it due to their um, limited capacity to to understand their current situation and this is what happens a lot of times in these type of lower income housing is that you, you might have people there that are just incapable of bringing the bed bug epidemic to to the attention of the authorities and and as a consequence you will suffer because the bed bugs will migrate to your apartment so that's one thing i wanted to talk about the other thing i wanted to talk about is i want to kind of try to manage people's expectation of what to to expect if you do happen to bring a lawsuit against a landlord there's i, I recently dealt with this young lady she had a terrible bed bug infestation and the landlord uh, acted, I believe, negligently and did not um, take measures quickly to help her, but she had an unrealistic expectation of what was going to happen. And her, in her mind, she had suffered, she had missed time from work, and the landlord should pay. And, and she was expecting, uh, you know, a triple digit settlement and 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 i try to tell her that this is not likely to happen and, and here's the reason why bed bugs are a pretty recent phenomenon it, of course bed bugs have been around since the time of the egyptians but here in america uh we had a chemical known as ddt up until about the early 70s that was extremely effective at killing bed bugs ddt was found to be unsafe and was pulled from the market the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, banned it throughout America. And when that happened, the bed bugs started to slowly kind of come back. And now they are at a, a probably a level where you'll see them in the inner cities and in, in really highly uh, uh, populated areas, but you won't see them everywhere, kind of like uh, roaches almost like cockroaches they're, they're they're prevalent but not everywhere not in every home and as a consequence of that judges that these case if you bring a lawsuit the judge that sees the case is probably not going to have a lot of experience dealing with the type of injuries that you will uh, experience from bed bugs now as a bed bug as a person that survived a, a bed bug infestation I can tell you the number one thing uh, is a loss of productivity. You're going to have time that you've missed from work because you couldn't sleep. Um, you're going to have certainly 
injuries to your body, bites and things like that. But judges that sit in, in most urban areas are used to more pronounced injuries. They're looking for, um, they want to see hospitalization. They want to see some kind of actual documented injury where you, so bad that you needed to go to the hospital. Unfortunately, with bed bugs, there's really not, I mean, unless you're just getting bit and you have some kind of histemic re reaction, a histamine reaction, and, and you are just, um, uh, have an adverse reaction to, to the coagulant that the bed bug injects in you when they bite you, um, there's not a likelihood that you're going to go see a doctor. You're probably going to tough it out you're, until you can get, a, uh, get the problem under control and you're probably never going to go see a doctor. And many judges are not persuaded by your receipts for bug bombs or, or other do-it-yourself meth methods. They want to see a receipt that came from a pest control operator. And so I try to tell people who have bed bug problems and, and uh, they're seeking a lawsuit, there's a couple things that you're going to need to do. First thing I would encourage everyone to do, whatever jurisdiction you live in, there is usually some kind of health code, some kind of environmental uh, protection uh, agency, some, some uh, at the county level, there's usually some agency, some, some authority that is tasked with ensuring that people that live in the community have safe and habitable housing. Now, I don't know what that is in your area, but you should file a complaint immediately with them. And what that does is it creates a paper trail. It, it, it effectively has that person, a third party, who is indifferent to you or the landlord, a neutral party, to come in and take a look at what's going on. Now, those documents and that uh, testimony can be used in court. It's much better than you showing up to court, making a statement and saying things that can be either contradicted or not admitted as hearsay. A third party independent person who is qualified, has the requisite credentials, can be subpoenaed. You could literally force them to come and testify on your behalf. And that carries a lot more weight than you just showing up to court and making an impassioned argument. It's, it's, judges are not going to be swayed by that. You have to have hard evidence. And what I mean by hard evidence is the best evidence, of course, is going to be the county health inspector who comes out and says, yes, on such and such a date, I was at that location, I found the presence of bed bugs, and I found that, uh, there, that there were sufficient amount of bed bugs to cause a problem, that, to render the dwelling uninhabitable. And that's important. And uh, so that's, that's the first thing you want to do. The second thing you want to do is a lot of times people don't understand the strategies that uh, the, the landlord's defense team, because most landlords will hire an attorney to defend them if you bring a lawsuit against them, the, the strategy is an attrition strategy. What they're trying to do is they're going to try to delay, 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 delay to try to get you, try to wear you down. And, and what I tell people is if you have a bed bug problem in a multi-dwelling uh, type structure, there's probably, your neighbors probably have that problem as well. And what you should do is band together and make a class action lawsuit. Because if there, there's a recent case here, um, I think it's in Contra Costa, California. Um, this was a case where there were 28 tenants that were living in a, a just a, a run-down apartment complex and the landlord was clearly negligent, was not taking any interest in, in providing habitable housing. They had made several complaints. They had done everything they could do. They had exhausted all their other resources and they had contacted the county health official, had them come out, make reports. So they had some ammunition, but they knew that their strength, their strength in numbers. And the beauty of the class action lawsuit Going back to what I was talking about delaying, one of the things, the tactics that the, the defense attorneys will do is they will 
ask for a continuance. So when the hearing comes up, when you come to go to court and, and you're actually going to present your case, the defense attorney, one of the tactics that they will use is they'll say, Your Honor, we haven't had proper time, adequate time to prepare. We need more time. The judge will usually grant that and usually kick the next hearing down the road, maybe two, three months. And what they're trying to do is is grind it out, trying to get you, because most people have jobs that they have to go to and, they, and it's difficult for them to get time off or time away from work. And they, the defense attorneys know that. But if you are in a, a member of a class action, like this group in Contra Costa, California, and you have 28, 30 people in your group, there's always gonna be somebody that can appear. There's always going to be, and, and any one of that party, any one of those groups, uh, any party to that group can appear in court and represent everyone else in a class action. That's the beauty of it. Uh, also, there's money. Um, most, uh, most judges really take a dim view of people representing themselves in court. That's c considered pro se. If you bring your case pro se, uh, most judges really frown on that because you're not familiar with the procedures. They have to spend time coaching you up on things that, you, that uh, if you were represented by an attorney, they wouldn't otherwise have to do. And so they automatically kind of take a, have a chip on their shoulder when you, when you bring a case pro se. So, but if you do a class action lawsuit and there, instead of one uh, plaintiff, there are 28, 30 plaintiffs, there's a strong likelihood you'll be able to find an attorney that will represent you in that action. And uh, always medical records helps. Uh, can't go, can't, you can never go wrong if you show up and you have uh, documentation uh, of medicine that was prescribed to you, treatments that were prescribed to you, and it, and it bears the signature of the medical doctor. Even better if you can get that doctor to appear and, and uh, testify on your behalf. So those are some of the things that I wanted to talk about here. Um, in closing, um, there's one aspect in this case in, in uh, Con Concord, California. There was a case in Concord, California that really kind of disturbed me. First time I'd ever seen it was uh, they went, there was a TV broadcast of, of a bunch of tenants forming together to get a class action lawsuit together against their landlord. And um, this, they went inside this one woman's apartment and the infestation was horrible and it was at a level where I had never seen it before. I, I'm, I've used to see, I'm used to seeing bed bug harborages or where the bed bugs hang out, usually in the box spring of the mattress. That's almost, I would say probably 80 to 85 percent of the time someone has a bed bug infestation, you're going to find them in the box spring mat mattress of the bed or find them in the, co the cushions or, or the crevices of a, of a couch or love seat. That's 85 to 90 percent of the time. This particular woman had a harborage that was actually in the ceiling on the corner of her uh, wall, you know, between the ceiling and a, and a wall. I'd never seen that before, meaning uh, bed bug harborages can be vertical. They can literally be above your head. News to me, and, and it should be news to you, and I'm glad that I was able to get that out to you. Um, I always coach on, on my website, if you uh, can locate the harborage, you have at least uh, a, a minimal chance of, of applying some bleach uh, or some kind of alcohol mixture to it to, to kill the bugs. You can actually apply chemicals to them um, and, and kill them, but I had never encountered uh, an infestation that was actually on the ceiling, but it, it is possible. So I just wanted to let you know that. Uh, again, my name is Joel Z. Williams. I am the Poor People's Advocate. You will recognize me by my white hat, but you will know me by my virtuous ways. Thank you.